My thoughts this morning are offered on behalf of the United States Navy, which was a primary beneficiary of Steve Farley's distinguished leadership and honorable service. As a shipmate and a friend of Steve's, I deliver my words with a lump in my throat and a badly wounded spirit. No matter what I say here or what any among us say today, we will fall short in according Steve the full measure of respect and honor that he deserves. So we defer to our eternal father to render Steve the ultimate honors. To put in perspective the it that Steve had, I want to wind back the clock to the 1780s. Picture, if you will, John Paul Jones speaking to the Continental Congress about the characteristics of the officers he seeks for building an enduring Navy. John Paul Jones said, it is by no means enough that an officer of the Navy should be a capable mariner. He must be that, of course, but also a great deal more. He should be, as well, a gentleman of liberal education, refined manners, punctilious courtesy, and the nicest sense of personal decency. The father of the American Navy was 230 years ahead of his time in describing the model officer, Captain Stephen Lee Farley, the perfect gentleman. So where does our country find men like Steve Farley? Well, they come from homes where family comes first, where unwavering moral convictions run strong, and where honorable behavior is a way of life. Jean and Barbara Farley, Steve's parents, made such a home for their children. Jean's a Navy veteran of World War II and a career Army veteran of both the Korea and Vietnam Wars. To Jean and Barbara, thank you for your strong faith. Thank you for raising Steve in a manner that embraced integrity, honesty, and humility. It made all the difference. On 2002, in 2002, on the one-year anniversary of 9-11, President Bush said, and I quote, there is a line in our time and in every time between the defenders of human liberty and those who seek to master the minds and souls of others. Our generation has now heard history's call and we will answer it, end quote. As I noted other, earlier, Steve answered history's call three times following 9-11. Recalled to active duty and supportive military operations in the Seventh Fleet, and support of U.S. foreign policy in Iraq. Most of us, if we even think about it, hope to choose the moment when we will answer history's call. For Steve, the moment chose him. Answering the call for Steve was not a career move. It was an act of the heart. Let me attempt then to put into context, real world context, what the ultimate act of the heart looks like. And rather than listen to my words, I'd much rather have you listen to Steve's. These are excerpts from an email that he wrote on March 14th of this year. Dear friends and family, seems like only yesterday that I was leaving for my third mobilization on to Iraq. The year has passed so quickly my tour was personally one of the most rewarding opportunities I've ever had. The Iraqi people I worked with have literally become my brothers, to which some I owe my life, and others my enduring admiration for their personal sacrifices and their hospitality. They are my brothers in the struggle against forces bent on denying individual rights and the pursuit of freedom and happiness. They are my, quote, brothers in the word, end quote. We share a mutual father in Abraham. 
The past 12 months have been the most dangerous of my life, but the one thought that I will leave this country with is that the humanity of our Iraqi brothers and sisters transcends cultural and religious differences. What matters is that these people only want for their families the things that every American wants for theirs. Safety and security for our loved ones, the opportunity to see our children grow and learn to become adults, pursuing those things in our lives that give us peace with our God and a sense of reason for our existence. Steve writes, I have had the opportunity to view firsthand in some of the worst areas of hostility the desire and sacrifice which the majority of those I met possess. The selfless sacrifices they endured to help make their country become a better place to live always amazed me. I went where the news media would not, and I experienced the stories they won't tell. My military service since 1970 has taken me to a lot of foreign lands in defense of so many important ventures, but none as important as this. My life has been forever changed by the strength and efforts of the Iraqi people. Gaining from my experience and the contributions our country's men and women have made to this effort, I am compelled, he writes, to continue my part to this cause. I have decided and have my family's blessings to return to Iraq for another year with the Department of State, for which I enter employment on the 28th of March. I ask your continued support and prayers, and again, thank you for being there for my family and me. God bless, Steve. I have my family's blessing. Wow. The very nature of Navy duty means time away from family, sometimes for very long periods, and often it's solitary duty. But after three recalls to active duty, Steve had more than his family's blessings. He had their enduring love and admiration, admiration for who he was as a man and what he stood for. And Steve, in this way, was the envy of all naval officers. Because his family was 100% immersed in his mission. And although they knew the risks, they knew also that loving Steve was synonymous with allowing him the latitude to serve a greater cause. Steve Farley understood the risks, but he didn't waver. The cause was too important. And when heavy seas came this sailor's way, Steve pointed the bow of his life into the teeth of the waves, praying for calmer seas and fully trusting in his Lord. Calmer seas came on June 24th when Steve's ship altered course one last time and he turned into the heavenly winds. It has been said that leaders are like eagles. They don't flock. You have to find them one at a time. Steve Farley was an eagle. To paraphrase President Reagan, most people go through life wondering if they had made a difference. Steve Farley did not have that problem. Our first duty is to remember. It is for those whose freedoms were defended to remember sacrifice and to honor our heroes. So in remembrance of Captain Steve Farley, I will close with another quote, this one by William Penn. I expect to pass through life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now and not defer or neglect it, as I shall not pass this way again. Well done, my friend. Job well done.